Hello all. Today we are going to discuss on mathematical background for cryptography. In this one, we are covering the concepts of congruence and algebraic structures. Agenda for discussion is congruence. Then after that, we cover useful algebraic structures, namely groups, rings, and fields. Learning objectives. After attending this session, you shall be able to explain the meaning of congruence, describe useful algebraics and their properties, namely groups, rings, and fields. First, we shall discuss on understanding congruence. Earlier, we had seen the importance of modulo operator. Whenever we make use of the division, then two inputs as operands are given, then division gives out two outputs, Q and R, quotient and remainder. In modulo operator, we are only interested in the non-negative remainder value. This non-negative remainder value plays a very crucial role in our cryptography. Now we shall discuss on concepts that facilitate understanding of congruence. We shall look at set of integers then set of residues set of integers this is usually denoted by capital z it contains all integral numbers with no fraction from negative infinity to positive infinity we define the set of integers as z equal to opening flower bracket then minus infinity up to plus infinity. Now, whenever we carry out division, from the division, we are going to establish a set of residues, which is represented as z n the result of the modulo operator r please you can notice here the symbol we have got three lines here not equal sign which represents congruence operation r equal to congruence of d mod n is always a non negative integer between 0 and n minus 1 that is 0 up to n minus n, n minus 1 value the r is going to have r is a remainder the modulo operation creates a set of least residues of modulo n or zn This understanding of the concept Zn is very crucial. We shall go deeper into it now. However, we need to remember that although we have only one set of integers Z, we have infinite instances of the set of residues, one for each value of n. What does it represent? So we shall just try to understand what we had just mentioned set of residues and instances of set of residues that is what we shall understand if we have only one set of integers z we have infinite instances of the set of residues zn one for each value of n Example, following figure shows the set Zn. 
based on what value we give to n, we are going to create the set Zn. Now, if n value is 3, then all the values between 0 and 3 will be listed out under Z3. If you look at it here, Z3 is going to have 0, 1 and 2. For Z5, we are having set of residue values as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, Z7 is having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Z9 is having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In cryptography, we often use the concept of congruence instead of equality. Mapping from set of integers z to set of residues is not one to one, but it is infinite numbers of z can map to one member of Zn. Example, the result of 2 mod 10 is equal to 2, 12 mod 10 is 2, 22 mod 10 is 2. Now we can see member of Z integers set is 2 here. And for getting this particular residue, we carry out mod operation on three values that is 2, then 12, and 22, which are members of Z or set of integers. So, all these 2, 12, 10, when we perform the activities of mod 10, belong residue means. 2 more 10 also resulted in residue, 12 more 10 also resulted in residue 2, 22 more 10 also resi the actually resulted in residue 2 means many values of z which is the set of integers map to one value of zn that is set of residues that is 2 12 10 are mapped to 2 of zn here we call 2 12 10 as congruent of module 10 means they are producing and map to the same value of residue Now to understand congruence, we have to be very clear about certain notations and ideas. First important and foremost thing is that we have to difference, we have to understand the difference between equal to and congruence operators. Equal to is having two strokes. Whereas congruence operator is having three strokes. We have to very carefully look at these differences. Now, equality to operator maps a member of Z to itself, means when we make use of the operator and apply it on operands, for example, let us say 2 plus 3 then what value we get is phi. This phi also belongs to the integer set. Phi minus 7. At that time, we get 
minus 2 and we have to convert based on what module value we are making use of and uh, consider the positive value in the set of integers like that we take two operands from the set of integer z carry out uh, operation on it and what result we are going to get is also an integer belongs to the z set only however in case of congruence operator we are mapping many members from z not to z itself but to a member of set of residuals zn so the first difference is we are not mapping back to z as we did in the equality operations but in congruent operations we are mapping the set of integers to a member of set of residues second and foremost difference between equality and congruence operators is that equality operator is one to one means when we carry out the activities what output we are going to get is going to be unique based on the uniqueness of two inputs we are considering However, in case of congruence operator, it many to one. This thing we had seen it earlier, that is uh, making use of uh, 2 mod 10, 12 mod 10, 22 mod 10, all had given the value of the 2, which is in the residue. So 2, 12, 10 are considered as congruent of mod 10 and map to the value of 2. Next thing we have to find is meaning of mod n. Whenever we are seeing a mod n in congruent operation to the right side of the congruent operator, you have to see that it is a phrase it is an indication of the distinction set zn destination set zn it indicates that the modulus is used in mapping please understand that when to the right side of the congruence operator then it is indicating that there is a mapping taking place between the integer set z and residual set zn please note that in congruence operator mod n is not a operator if you remember in earlier arithmetic when we use mod n it was an operator indicating consideration of a residue only but here it is indicating the mapping between two sets z and zn how it is going to happen that we shall see it now now consider set of zn z which is being represented from minus infinity to plus infinity Now we are interested in applying the mod 10 in congruence operation. And we applied this one on minus 8 mod 10, then 2, 12 mod 10, and 22 mod 10. 
when we are using this one in the congruence of indicating that minus i am talking that to the right side of the congruence operation if you are getting minus 8 then mod 10 it is indicating that we are forming the mapping between z and z10 so mod 10 is indicating that we are interested in set of residues between 0 to 9 so that is what is z10 now when i am applying minus 8 mod 10 the value which i am going to get will is 2 this 2 is appearing in z10 so we are mapping that value similarly when i perform mod 10 congruence operation on 2 i get again 2 when i am doing it on 12 i get 2 when i perform at 22 i get 2 means when the congruence operation is carried out over many values by considering a specific n value here the specific n value that we consider is 10 then in the restrictive set that we have created the values will be from 0 then less than or less than 10 because of that we are having 0 1 2 3 up to 9 in z10 now we are working out the mod operations on a different integer values in z which are mapping to one value if you look at here minus 8 then 2 12 and 22 all are called as congruences 10 operation there specific to that all of them have given rise to a residue 2 means set of integer values when are mapped by making use of mod of specific value they result in mapping to the residual set so this particular must be very clear to all of you otherwise you struggle in understanding the next concepts so residue classes a residue class represented within square bracket or square bracket a n set of integers congruent modulo n means we take a specific number on that when we carry out a modulo n operator when we carry out this then we will get a, a specific value for example if you look at here it is the set of all integers such that x is congruent of a mod n mod n is representing congruence option here now based on what is the value of n we are going to get a number of residual classes here now if we consider the value of n as 5 then in the residual set we are going to have the values from 0 to 4 so there is one class 0 another class 1 and another class 2 3 now we are interested in picking up the values from the integer set z which is giving rise to the value of 0 now we go on looking at the values for example when i pick up minus 15 and apply the mod 5 on it 
then I am going to get residue 0. Please remember, we are only interested in residues, not the quotient sign. Similarly, minus 10, on that one, when I apply 5, once again, I get 0 as a residue. Minus 5, 0. Then 0 mod 5 is 0. 5 mod 5 is also resulting in 0 residue. So like that, the residue class A, in this case, residue class 0 is having the values which are giving rise to residue 0 when divided by 5 here. So the set is consisting of all those values. Similarly, the class 1 represented within the square bracket as 1 is considering all the values from the set of integers z which are actually giving rise to residue 1. So minus 14 mod 5 it is giving rise to residue 1 minus 9 mod 5 minus 4 mod 5 1 mod 5 1 the mod 6 means here mod n when I am referring it is congruent operation. Most specifically, what I want to say is minus 14 congruent of 5, minus 9 congruent of 5, minus 4 congruent of 5, 1 congruent of 5, 6 congruent of 1. All these things are giving rise to residue 1. Similarly, we can see that for residue 2, we have got uh, the when we perform congruent operation with n value as 5, then minus 13, minus 8, minus 3, 2 and 7 are giving rise to residual value 2. Similarly, for residual value of 3, using the modular congruent mo operation n equal to 5, then we will get the values like minus 12, minus 7, minus 2, 3 and 8. For class of residues 4, when we perform congruent operation with n equal to 5, then we will get minus 11, minus 6, minus 1, 4, 4, 9. Means all these values mapping to residue 4. Now we shall look at it, how circular notation can be used to represent trends. All congruent integers modulo n occupy the same point on the circle. Positive and negative integers from z are mapped to the circle in such a way that there is symmetric between them. Earlier we represented a set of integers z which is moved from a minus infinity to plus infinity. So that we are represented using a straight line minus n minus 1 like that minus 2 minus 1 0 then it is moving towards uh, the positive side 1 2 3 and up to n minus 1. Now in congruence which is set of residues we are putting the circle we mark here as 0. 0 is indicating the residue value. Now from the center point when we will put the line on that one, we are going to have all the values from the set of integer z that are resulting in zero value. Similarly, when you apply the congruence of zn on the all these values of integer set that which result in residue one, then from the center of the, the circle up to 1, if we put a line, all the values that result in residue 1 will be coming on that line. Similarly, all the values of the integer set z that give rise to residue value 2 will be falling on the line starting from the center of the circle up to 2. Like that, we map the all the values. So in case of Zn, 
the residual values will be from 0, 1, 2, 3, like that, they will be running up to n minus 1. Now we shall look at some of the useful properties of modulo n arithmetic. First property a plus b mod n is a mod n plus b mod n. Then congruent operation mod n. Second property a minus b mod n equal to a mod n minus b mod n then we are having congregation operation mod n. Third property a into b mod n is a mod n multiplication of b mod n it results in end mod n. So these are the three properties which are very useful in modulo arithmetic. Now we shall look these are called as al algebraic structures means we make use of the basic set theory we make use of a modulo arithmetic we make use of congruence and using those basic concepts we try to build higher algebraic structures because cryptography requires sets of integers and specific operations that are defined on those sets the combination of the set and the operations that are applied to the elements of the set of numbers is called an algebraic structure means algebraic structure is a combination of set and the operations that are applied to the elements of the set of those numbers in that set. There are three common algebraic structures groups, rings, and fields. Group represented a capital Z is a set of elements with a binary operation star and it is represented as a pair within opening a caret bracket g comma star closing bracket please note that this star is an operation not a multiplication symbol here in which the operator satisfies the four properties one is closure, second one is associativity, third one is identity element, fourth one is inverse. What do you mean by closure? If A and B are elements of G, the set G, then if we perform the operation star on A and B, whatever value is coming out of it that also is an element of z if we take three elements a b and c which are the elements of g and when we carry out the operations as a star means operation a operation in the bracket b operation c bracket complete then we are going to get another th the result from carrying out the operation open bracket a and operation b bracket complete operation c then whatever values we get a star open bracket b star c close bracket and a star b both the bracket complete star c when you compare it both will be equal this is associativity if it is happening that is one of the properties of group third one is identity element there exists an element i in g 
such that for all b in g i star b equal to b equal to b star i fourth one is inverse for each element b in g there exists exactly one element in g such that element c in g fulfills b star c equal to c star b equal to i c is referred to as the inverse of b here so in the set g when we carry out the operation star on the elements of g if it is fulfilling closure property associative property identity element and inverse property then that particular set is referred to as a group along with these four properties if commutative property which is indicating that for all a and b in g if a star b equal to b star a then we say that commutative property is fulfilled if along with closure associativity identity element inverse if we see that commutative property is also being fulfilled then we call that commutative group as commutative group so to say a particular group and to say if we to what is the category of it these properties play a very crucial role in case of ring a ring is an algebraic structure with the two operations represented as open caret r comma star comma plus if we want to qualify that particular set r is a ring then first operation star and second operation plus shall operate as follows first operation must satisfy all five properties required for an abelian group namely closures associativity identity element inverse and commutative property which we had seen in discussing group along with this fulfillment of first operations second operation plus must satisfy only the closure and associative properties and must be distributed over the first means distributive means for all x comma y and z elements of ring r we have x plus within bracket y star z equal to within bracket x plus y star within bracket x plus z and within bracket x star y bracket complete plus z equal to opening bracket x plus z closing bracket star opening bracket y plus z and close bracket when this is being fulfilled then it is called as distributive means to qualify as a ring the two operators star and plus must fulfill and along with that there is a need for fulfillment of the second operation to be distributed along with these properties if commutative property is also satisfied for the second operator plus then we call it as a commutative ring now the last algebraic structure is field a field f is an algebraic structure with the two operations represented as r star plus is commutative ring in which second operation satisfies closures associate few inverse and commutative property defined for first operation except that identity element of the first operation operator has no inverse means ring by nature it is commutative the field by nature is commutative ring along with that it the one more condition is the identity element of the first operator shall not have any inverse except this it has to fulfill remaining four properties 
so with this we come to the end of the session 4 and we shall consider some more examples in next session and with this we come to the end of the session 4 today we discuss about congruence congruence is mapping between a set of integer z with set of residue zn it is representing equality but uh, in case of modulo arithmetic we refer to as congruence and we had seen that how we can represent congruence in a circular form after that we discuss on algebraic structures and group field and ring concepts we had considered during the discussion with this we come to the end of the session